Sometimes there's a mystery detectives cannot solve. Their problems only multiply, solutions just evolve. And then comes the great divide that splits things all apart. Then you need the master, a man with math and heart. He's Abacus the Great, he'll clear up all suspicion. He'll distribute, regroup, solve for X, cause he's a math magician. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. All things which he excels. Polygons, fractions, a man of many spells. The steps are simple, one by one, the numbers infinite. For help in math, both big and small, call Abacus the Great! Good day, apprentices, and welcome to another episode of Abacus the Great! I thought talking slower that that wouldn't happen. Welcome again to another episode. This week, we are going to be learning about two-dimensional shapes. Don't be a square. Stick around as Helix triangulates his way through this week's song. A polygon is a shape that has many different sides. There are many types of them besides the squares and triangles. I know about the pentagons and hexagons and hexagons from three sides all the way up to eight sides. A triangle will have three sides and three angles. A polygon with four could be square or rectangle. A pentagon has five sides and five angles. 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 A hexagon goes up to six and a hexagon has eight of them. A hexagon goes up to six and a hexagon has eight of them. A hexagon goes up to six and a hexagon has eight of them. A hexagon goes up to six and a I'm very good at naming line A, B, and angle A, B, C. I can categorize the angles of a cube, right, and all of two. Say short, a matrix, quadrilateral, triangle, and polygons. I am the very model of a modern major geometrist. Two-dimensional shapes. There's all sorts of things we're going to be learning about, from sides to angles and everything in between. How about we get to it? To be able to understand two-dimensional shapes, we need to understand these five vocabulary words first. Edges or sides, vertices or corners, right angles, obtuse angles, and acute angles. I've drawn a shape here for us to look at to start to learn some of these. The edges or sides are exactly as it sounds. I have marked the four edges of this rectangle. Vertices, which is more than one, vertex would be the singular, are the corners of it. Here, 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 and here. This shape that I have drawn has four edges and four vertices. The types of angles are going to get into the different kinds of classification, especially when we get into some specific shapes. The first one there, the right angle, is when two lines meet and that corner here forms that exact box. A right angle would measure at 90 degrees. An obtuse angle would be like this angle I've drawn here. Any angle that is larger than that 90 degrees. And just opposite of that, an acute angle is any angle that would measure smaller than that 90 degrees, like this one we have drawn for us here. Let's start looking at some of our shapes. The first of the shapes we're going to discuss is a rectangle. Now, that shape I drew in the beginning was a rectangle. So count how many sides there are. One, two, three, four. So a rectangle has four sides. Now, you'll notice that this side is equal to this side. And this side, I'm going to give it three dashes, is equal to that side. So that rectangle, the four sides of that rectangle, you're going to have two pairs of equal sides. The top is equal to the bottom, and the left is equal to the right. The vertices now, you're going to notice we have that same four of them. But more specifically, we have four 90-degree or right angles. 
So four angles measuring exactly 90 degrees. Let's look at one specific type of rectangle, a square. What do you notice about this square that might have been different from the rectangle? All four sides are equal. So we could modify this here to say four equal sides. If all four sides are equal, then it is still a rectangle, but it is also a square. There's a few other quadrilaterals we're going to look at here. Now, quad just means four, lateral is side. The, the, the other quadrilaterals or four sided shapes we're going to discuss are parallelogram, which a rectangle is a parallelogram, and a square is a parallelogram. But the thing that makes them a parallelogram is that they have two sets of parallel sides. So this side is parallel to that side, which means we could draw them forever and they would never cross. And this side is parallel to that side. We draw them forever and they'd never cross. Now, the thing that a parallelogram might not have that squares and rectangles do is the 90 degree angles. This angle here will be equal to that angle, and this angle will be equal to that angle, but they're not all going to be 90 degree angles. Now, a rhombus is another specific type of parallelogram. And I'm just drawing this by hand here, so it's not going to end up perfect, but we'll get the point across. The thing about a rhombus that makes it special is like a square, all four of its sides are supposed to be equal. I know mine aren't. Bear with me. But the rhombus, all four sides are going to be equal. So a square is a rhombus because it has all four sides equal. But a rhombus doesn't have to be a square because its angles aren't all 90 degrees. So we classify these shapes based on their sides and angles and those measurements. Now, a trapezoid gets a little bit different. A trapezoid is going to have a set of parallel lines like that. If we continue drawing those, they would go forever without crossing. But the other side of them are not parallel. So if we were to continue drawing those two lines, and I'll just do that real quick, they would eventually cross. Because they would eventually cross, they're intersecting rather than parallel. And because those two lines would eventually intersect, this can't be classified as a parallelogram because not all of its sides are parallel with each other. This is what we would call a trapezoid. There are different types of triangles we're going to discuss, but the first thing I want you to think about when we say triangle is that tri. I said quadrilateral for all of the four-sided shapes. What does tri mean? Tri means three. So I would draw here then a triangle, a three-sided shape. It will have three sides and three vertices or corners. There are many different types of triangles. The right triangle is going to be that right angle in the corner. So when we draw out that triangle, that corner down here in the bottom is going to be a right angle, that 90 degrees. Now, an obtuse triangle, that right angle is going to become an obtuse angle. So it's going to be larger than that 90 degrees. We draw that obtuse angle, and then we just connect in the third side. So there we have an, um, an obtuse triangle. An acute triangle, then, is going to be smaller. So we now have those angles that are smaller than 90 degrees. And then the final one, an equilateral triangle, would be like the triangle I drew in the very beginning, where all three sides are equilateral. Okay? All three sides of that are equal. So we have a right triangle, an obtuse triangle, an acute triangle, and an equilateral triangle. Now, there is one other way that we can classify triangles. Remember, the equilateral triangle was when all three sides were equal. We also have scalene and isosceles. Now, those are really weird words, so say them with me. Scalene, isosceles. 
A scalene triangle is going to classify the triangle that has three different sides that are all different lengths. So remember the equilateral triangle, all three sides were the same length. The scalene triangle are all different. That side is shorter than that side, which is shorter than that side. The scalene triangle, all three sides are different. Or the isosceles triangle then is going to be a lot of your right angles where I have two sides that are the same. That side and that side are the same length. But then the hypotenuse out here is different. So scalene, all three sides are different. Isosceles has two sides that are the same. And then equilateral, all three sides are the same. There's a few other shapes we just want to talk about quickly here. Uh, they're all going to deal with like triangle was three, quadrilateral was four. We have pent, oct, and hex. Pent means five. Uh, if you think about Washington, D.C., they have a building that's named the Pentagon. It's named that because it's a five-sided building. So a pentagon is a five-sided shape. Hex means six. So a hexagon, it's going to be like a rupee from the Legend of Zelda. A hexagon has six sides. And then an octagon is going to be like your classic stop sign that you see as your parents are driving you down the road. An octagon has eight sides. So triangle had three, quadrilateral had four, pentagon has five, hexagon has six, octagon has eight. That's the long and the short of 2D shapes for this week's episode. Let's go ahead and go to our student question for this week. This week's apprentice question comes to us from an apprentice named Taylor. Hi, Abacus. If I have... If I plant 12 seeds in my garden and only a fourth of them grow, how many grew? Throwing some fractions at me, huh, Taylor? There's a couple of different ways we can think of this problem. Ultimately, what we're going to be doing is your 12 plants, and then we're going to multiply that by one fourth. If we know how to multiply fractions, that's easy enough. You do 12 multiply 1, gives you 12 on top. You keep the 4 on the bottom. Then remember, our fraction bar simply means divide. So 12 divided by 4 is 3. If we don't know how to multiply fractions, there is another way we could go about doing this. So let's say we draw four boxes to represent the fourths. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4. So that represents my fourth. Now I'm wondering how much 1 fourth is. If this whole box is worth 12, then I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And now I've calculated that 1 fourth right there is equal to 3 without ever actually doing any math at all. So if you planted 12 plants and only 1 fourth of them grew, 3 of your plants grew. You might want to work on that green thumb there. Thanks for that question, Taylor. All right, apprentices, our magic trick for this week is going to be a simple exercise in counting. Now I'm going to tell you a story to go along with it. There once was a farmer who lived in a quiet little village. Now this farmer had five sheep. One, two, three, four, five. Now in this village, there were also two pretty bad men who liked to rob and steal farmer's sheep. One, two. Now, knowing that these five sheep were on this farmer's land, the two men decided to go into the farmer's barns to hide away for the day. Now, as night fell, farmer went inside. The bad guys thought it was going to be okay to steal the sheep. So they snuck out and stole them. One, two, three. Four, five. Now, what they didn't realize was that the farmer had not actually gone to bed, and he was making his way out to make one more check on his sheep. So as to not get caught, they put those sheep back. One, two, three, 
four, five. Now, after the farmer went back to bed again, uh, those bad men went out to re-steal those sheep. One, two, three, four, five. Now, the farmer had not actually gone to bed yet because he was just feeling that something was kind of suspicious. So he made his way back out to his barn to check on his sheep. And what did that farmer find? But one, two, three, four, five sheep. And while the farmer was in that barn, the one, two bad men got away. That's counting, which is math. That's magic. That's it for this week's episode of Abacus the Great. Until next time. Good day, apprentices. I said good day. Thanks for watching this week's episode, guys. If you like what you saw, click that like button down below. If you want to keep up to date, be sure to click subscribe. However, you're running out of time. This season of Abacus the Great only has two episodes left before we take a break for the school year to come back next summer. See you around.